What's up, heathens? Today, I would like to welcome you to a new little series that I'm going to do, and that's Ancient Aliens Debunked. Uh, now, there's already a really good documentary out there where they go through and debunk some of the, the, the more of the points from the actual Ancient Aliens series on the History Channel, and I definitely say, you know, go down there and check that out. Uh, today, we're looking at nuclear reactors. Were they put here by aliens? Nobody knows. Actually, science knows. They didn't. It was an aliens. Did humans create this 1.8 billion years ago? No, humans did not create that 1.8 billion years ago. Uranium is definitely a naturally occurring element. Even the uh, radioactive versions of it being uranium 235 and 238. In 1972, a French factory imported uranium ore from- Oh, fuck you! In 1972, a French factory imported uranium ore from Oklo in Africa's Gabon. It is true that in 1972, the French factory did unearth um, the uranium at uh, Oklo uh, in, in Africa, but <laughs> it, it's not as mysterious as you would like to think. After receiving the ore, they were shocked to find that all of the ores had been previously extracted. Now, this particular part is very misleading because it says that after receiving the ore, they were shocked to find that all the ores had been previously extracted, and that's not true. It's not that the, uh, like, they make it sound like uh, the ores were previously dug up or whatnot or even used. The uh, uranium cores differed by about 0 .003 in their uranium um, uh, saturation. And the reason why this is a big deal is because uniformly throughout the universe, you know, you know as seen in uh, asteroids, meteorites, and, uh, you know, just on Earth in general, uh, right now the uranium concentration is usually about 0 0.172. For it to be, you know, that, that, uh, that, that big of a change uh, is very, very significant. And it, it uh, you know, uh, made them want to question like why it was a little depleted. They hired scientists from across the world to investigate the matter. Well, yes, they did hire scientists from all over the globe uh, to research why this happened because, you know, you can weaponize uranium-235 and 238 and whatnot. You, you, can, you can weaponize uranium in order to make nuclear warheads. So any unaccounted for uranium really needs to be investigated as to why it is not there and later found out that the site of origin was a huge nuclear reactor. Well, golly. Yes, this is true, but this place is only one of 16 natural uh, nuclear reactors in that region, and then there's one about 30 kilometers away that also exists. It's actually the last natural nuclear reactor that exists here on Earth until we find a different one somewhere. It existed 1.8 billion years ago and was in operation for over 500,000 years. Unless you believe the Bible, then this is all bullshit for to begin with. I Actually, it was more like it was in operation for about 1 million years, but that was because basically what you had is you had this area with this super concentrated uranium that allowed it to fission. And um, you had all the all the components there in order for, you know, fission to happen, uh, being that you had um, a certain thickness of uranium there, uh, you had to have a certain concentration of the uranium, you had to have no neutron absorbing elements in the area, like silver or boron, and also you had to have water. So how nuclear uh, uh, reactors work is that you have the radioactive material, usually uranium, and what it does is it causes a nuclear fission to happen uh, through the neutrons and whatnot that are emitted. If you have a moderating substance, usually water or graphite, then you can cause other atoms to go uh, undergo this fission too. So it's this continual fission of these molecules that causes the energy to be released that <laughs> in turn heats the water and causes the steam to rise up and, and, and then in modern nuclear uh, facilities, it turns turbines, 
which then generate electricity. Now the average power output of these natural nuclear reactors is about a hundred kilowatts, which could uh, power like a thousand light bulbs. The nuclear reactors that we actually build generally output a thousand megawatts which could light about 10 million light bulbs. So if you can imagine these natural nuclear reactors uh, were very crude and poor in design and did not output a lot of power, but they were able to su sustain this function over like a million years because, you know, water would come in and then it would get depleted. And then, it, you know, all of this would happen in a matter of hours. So it was continuously going on and off, on and off, on and off like that at a constant rate. So it w allowed it to last like a long time. Prior to the discovery, we believe that only multicellular organisms roam the earth because fuck single celled organisms. And actually the reason why uranium was concentrated in those pockets in o Oklo is because of the the great um, uh, amount of oxygen that existed about two billion years ago, and the reason why oxygen existed then is because you had these single celled photosynthetic organisms that produced oxygen in our atmosphere and highly oxygen oxygenated it. Um, it actually increased from less than one percent oxygen all the way up to just less than fifteen percent. You know, uranium. It has to be carried, uh, it has to be soluble in like water in order for it to be carried to different places. And so with the high amount of oxygen uh, running through the air and whatnot, it allowed the uranium to become soluble and move into these certain pockets. So who created such a nuclear reactor almost two billion years ago? Um, this is begging the question. Nobody created these. Uh, there are natural reasons for why these things existed. Everything that I've mentioned up until this point. Nobel Prize winner Glenn T. Seaborg also claimed that the nuclear reactor wasn't a natural occurrence. But this would be an appeal to authority fallacy. Uh, just because this guy has a Nobel Prize does not mean that he is correct about this. And he's got a Nobel Prize for his scientific work in transuranium elements. It was awarded to him in 1951. Uh, just because he says anything it, because of who he is doesn't mean he, that he is correct. He has to have evidence for, uh, to in order to suggest that. Now, I'm sure at first it may have seemed like, you know, this couldn't have been created naturally. But since then, we have actually been able to to explain these things. Hence, the entire explanations that I've, uh, I've given up until this point. But instead, a man-made product. There's no evidence to suggest that this was man-made. If it was man-made, you would expect some kind of order to it. And there was no real order. There were just uranium deposits that collected there because water uh, wore away the sandstone and the trace elements of uranium that was in the sandstone collected and, and, and formed these uranium deposits. There are natural reasons for why all of this stuff came into being. His reason for saying this was that there are very, oh fuck. His reason for saying this was that there are very specific conditions needed in order for uranium to react. There are very specific conditions that have to be met in order for uranium to react. You know, it, it's not as finely tuned as a lot of people like to make think. You need uh, uranium deposits, uh, right around 3% uranium uh, in order for it to react. You need it to be a certain thickness, which we've already covered with the deposits and the sandstone being run, uh, worn away by water and everything like that. And then you need some kind of moderating agent, which would have been water or graphite. And then you just need very little uh, neutron absorbing materials around it, like silver. It, it, it's not as improbable as you might think, 
Um, and there's actually only a few conditions that it has to meet that have natural explanations to why they would be that way in Okla. One condition is that water needs to be very pure, much more pure than its natural state. Almost sounds a bit like white supremacists. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> it doesn't need to be very pure. It just has to be water. Like we want it to be very pure because that increases the amount of power that it can produce. But since these are natural nuclear reactors, uh, what we would expect is a very low power output, and that's exactly what we see. You know, we don't we don't have you know very pure water that just naturally occurs on Earth. I mean, it's not going to be that way. The natural explanations can explain all of this, and it doesn't need very pure water. A material called U-235 is also needed in order for nuclear fission to occur. U-235 does naturally occur in various uh, trace amounts, and the reason why that there was such a concentration of it at that location is because of oxygen in our atmosphere like I've already covered before. The uranium was able to become soluble and transported uh, you know, to these locations and then water uh, eroded away the sandstone in which the uranium was contained in. And once the sandstone was eroded away, the uranium deposits collected and you know, masses uh, that that could produce, uh, you know, fissionable uranium. Reactor engineers stated that the uranium in Okolo, or Oklo didn't have enough U-235 for the reaction to have happened naturally. Uh, this is actually not true. Uranium-235, when they found it, of course, didn't, but that's because the reactor had been, you know, on for a million years, and it depleted, you know, the fissionable uh, U-235. Uh, but, you know, uh, back to about 2 billion years ago, there was a lot more U-235. And the reason why there's so little of it now is because of radioactive decay. So it makes sense that, that there would be a whole lot more of it back then. Such a phenomenon definitely raises a few eyebrows, tweaks a few buttholes too. It did raise eyebrows because you got to account for any missing uranium. And since they found less than what we know, you know, uranium uh, uh, is, is at, it, it does raise eyebrows because you can make weapons with it. So we have to account for it. That's why scientists were sent out and they were able to explain why it was there in that state. And shows there was definitely more than just multicellular organisms living on Earth during that time. Because we all know that single cell or organisms could definitely build that shit. No. Actually, uh, the reason why it's there is because of single celled organisms. So, I mean, you're, I guess you're tr it's true in this because it's not just multicellular organisms. It was single celled organisms that... We're using photosynthesis in order to produce oxygen. Could there have been advanced bands who created the nuclear reactor for uranium ore extraction? <laughs> no. <laughs> there were no advanced beings or anything like that. This theory or hypothesis right here has a number of different holes that uh, you can't explain. Like, for instance, if advanced beings were here 1.8 billion years ago that created these uh, nutri uh, nuclear uh, reactors, wouldn't you think that they would have made them in a way that gave you the best power output instead of the really crappy power output that you see these natural ones uh, uh, giving off. So it's ridiculous to posit that alien beings were here to create these nuclear reactors when they actually don't fit the model of what we would expect to see out of an advanced civilization. How else could a 1.8 billion year old reactor be explained by science? Um, this entire video up until this point. Beyond science! Subscribe to us for more bullshit now. Definitely find Beyond Science to subscribe to more bullshit now. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did indeed like it, leave me a like. Leave me a comment. I'm sure that I screwed up somewhere, so let me know down below. Don't forget to stand up, use your voice. I will see you heathens later.